You are listening to Proof Text, a Glossa House podcast exploring the scripture and all things related to it. New episodes are released daily. For more information, check out glossahouse.com and subscribe to our channels on Spotify and YouTube. Welcome and enjoy. Hello, I want to welcome you to Grammar Point. This is Fred Long and we're looking at the article. We're continuing a deeper dive into what may be called the definite article. Although Greek has no indefinite article, so people will often just call it the article. So earlier in uh, episodes uh, 82 and 84 of Proof Text, we uh, looked at the article and then the the most recent uh, grammar points looked at the article in more detail, particularly its discourse pragmatic functions in terms of introducing uh, a participant or entity by lack of an article, and then thereafter referring to that entity with the article, uh, which is, we can understand that as an anaphoric uh, use of the article, that is a pointing back, uh, except then when that participant or uh, entity is being stressed, in which case it, the article is removed once again. So there are more principles with regard to that use that I summarized in the past episode, so listen to that, watch that carefully. And in this episode, though, we're going to be looking at some special kind of rules uh, that are named after persons who articulated those rules. And right now we're going to be looking at what's uh, Ap- Apollonius's canon, Apollonius's canon and its corollary. So the Greek grammarian Apollonius Discolus in the second century articulated a canon, a rule, and a corollary regarding the article with two nouns in a modifying genitive relationship. So the canon, the rule, that's what the word canon means, uh, one N, is that genitive modifiers and their head noun will normally have the, uh, both have the article. So here we're looking at Acts, uh, this is from Koine Greek Grammar, by the way, Acts 17.30, tus chronus teis agonias, um, the times of ignorance. Notice that both of the, the genitive noun and its head noun have the article. And so in Galatians 2.14, you have prostein aletheian to evangelio, to the truth of the gospel. So tein uh, aletheian, has the article, and so does its genitive modifier. So this is the canon. Um, The canon is if uh, a genitive word is modifying a a head noun, and the head noun has the article, typically the, the, uh, the genitive modifier has it, and vice versa. So both will have the article. If one has the article, the other has the article. Now its corollary is that if the head noun is anarthrous, that is, has no article, the genitive modifier will also be anarthrous. So from John uh, 1.12, tekna theu, children of God. And, uh, you know, both are anarthrous. And then we have Galatians 2.16, ek pisteos Christu, uh, from faith or faithfulness of Christ. All right, so that's the canon and its corollary kind of simple, except there are exceptions. And a fellow by the name of Sanford D. Hull uh, looked at all 461 exceptions that have been tabulated in the New Testament and then uh, added some other kind of rules or conditions that would help explain all but 32 of these exceptions. So here's our a summary of uh, Sanford Hull's conditions. Well, the first condition is if there is a, an Arthras proper name. So the sons of Zebedee. So Zebedee is an Arthras. Uh, and um, so why is it an Arthras? Well, we don't know, but with, with uh, an Arthras proper nouns, this rule and its corollary, corollary can be violated. Well, here I think we need to think of the principles of 
that we looked at last time, discourse uh, principles, pragmatics, of um, introducing an entity or reintroducing an entity into the discourse. Such a person introduced or reintroduced is an arthris. So I'm thinking that, and I have not looked at this thoroughly, but my initial guess, postulate, would be that these so-called exceptions uh, to the corollary are not really exceptions, but simply following another set of principles, namely that of participant introduction or reintroduction into the discourse uh, and or uh, whether something is emphasized or not. Okay, so one condition is you have an arthrist proper names. Another condition is that the an arthrist head noun is the object of a preposition. Okay, so here you have first first Corinthians one nine, East Koinonian to you of to Jesu Christu for fellowship of his son Jesus Christ. Now here I would I would say so the word fellowship is anarthris, and we would expect that the genitive modifier, uh, the his son would also be um, anarthris, but it's not. It's got the article. So what is determining whether this is, um, you know, why is the first noun anarthris and the second one arthris? Well, again, I would say that in context, fellowship is being either introduced or emphasized. So em emphasized or introduced. In either case, the general principle is that an entity is an arthris. Okay, so uh, I think this, this can go a long way to explain uh, why you have these so-called violation of Apollonius's canon and corollary. In fact, 1 Corinthians 1.9 is part of the uh, kind of um, heading to the thesis statement of 1 Corinthians, which is found in 1.10, and it's a bit climactic. And I'm wondering whether the word koinonia has been introduced into the discourse or, uh, already or not, or whether it's indeed uh, stressed because of the, the content. Fellowship, I mean, actually participation, fellowship, sharing with Jesus Christ. I mean, that's a pretty prominent idea. Okay, another condition is that the head noun is a predicate uh, nominative. So uh, we're going to look at another rule uh, at some point with predicate nominatives, uh, Caldwell's rule. But, um, but this is a condition where by, um, again, uh, the head noun is an arthris, but then the genitive not, uh, modifier is articular. And so why is there this discordancy, this, uh, you know, breaking of Apollonius's, uh, Apollonius's uh, canon and corollary? Again, I would say that this idea of imitators is probably being stressed and so lacks the article in context. Um, another condition that Hall has identified is that the genitive modifying noun is curios. So when curios is uh, present as the genifying uh, modifier, it's often uh, an arthris. And so this is this then leads to a breaking of the rule, the way of the Lord, the way of the Lord. Again, I'm, I would propose that there are discourse pragmatic principles that we looked at last time that might explain for this in context. Um, another instance is the Narthur's head noun is in the vocative case. Well, here the vocative case does not have an article. So there, there is no article for the vocative case. So of course, then you're going to have discordancy between the head noun and the genitive modifier because there is no article for the vocative case. So that's, that's easily explained. Uh, a fifth, a, 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 I guess it would be a sixth condition, is that an arthur's head noun is modified by an adjective of quantity that resists taking an article, such as tis and numbers pas and polus and ikanos posos, etc. So um, you do have here um, some words that resist taking articles, and that's going to lead to discordancy uh, as well. Um, 
So here you have a sufficient, a sufficient uh, group of the city or people of the city. So people has no article, but then the word city does. Okay, and it may be, you know, in this case, that um, this crowd is being introduced for the first time, and therefore it's not going to have an article. So that could be an explanation as well. The seventh condition is that the anarthrous head noun is in apposition to another substantive. So in this case, you have the sign of circumcision is, is the main noun, and then you have in apposition to that... Um, Sfragida tes dikeosunes, a seal of righteousness. So the Greek has semeon peritomes, a sign of circumcision, which is anarthris. But then you have uh, an appositional noun, sfragida, that's going back to sign. And so it's agreeing with sign. Both of them are anarthris. But then the genitive modifier of dikeosunes is articular. Well, these are um, some conditions where you have a violation of Apollonius's canon. But I think many of these probably can be understood by way of the larger discourse pragmatic principles that I discussed and summarized last time. So anyway, this is Grammar Point uh, on the article going into more depth. I hope you found this helpful. Interested in growing your ancient language skills but not sure where to start? Glow's House can help. From illustrated readers and short stories to lexicons and grammars, Glow's House offers a variety of resources for beginning, intermediate, and experienced ancient language learners. Head to glowsahouse.com today. Glow's House, language resources for the global community.